Over the years, we have seen lots of Blender add-ons. Some of the OG add-ons for hard surface modeling, simulation, lighting, and so on are great. They stood the test of time, but some others that I keep seeing from time to time are really popular, but you rarely see them in Super High's first page or anywhere else really. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with Point Cloud Visualizer, which is probably the best option, as far as I know, for anyone dealing with 3D scan data or LiDAR point clouds in Blender. It lets you import and visualize hundreds of millions of points right in the viewport, only limited by your hardware. This means huge laser scans or photogrammetry point clouds can be handled smoothly without crashing the software. You see, the add-on treats points data efficiently because points live in a special container until you convert them to a mesh. So performance stays high, even with massive data sets. And this tool basically turns Blender into a viewer and an editor of that data, without having to go outside of Blender. It is actually super satisfying to fly around a dense point cloud of a city for example or a landscape and see those details rendered in real time. On a practical side, the Anno supports tons of file formats. You can at least read the common ones. Once your points are in Blender, the Anno gives you a Swiss army knife of editing tools. You can for example filter, clean, slice, subsample, and color adjust the point cloud. Also, you can remove outliers by value or color, and you can estimate normals and even do boolean cuts or split and join clouds. There are also handy features for visualization too, because you can shade points by depth, by normals, apply color schemes, and use clipping planes to inspect interiors. It even allows converting point clouds to meshes or volumes for using geometry nodes or rendering in cycles. On the other hand, physical starlight and atmosphere is all about achieving realistic outdoor lighting in Blender with minimal effort. Essentially, this add-on acts as a full environment sky simulator, which dynamically generates a procedural sky, sun, and atmosphere that can respond to real-world parameters. The first impression I had when seeing this is that it is simulated in reality itself. So the real magic here is that it is based on real physics, volumetric atmospheric scattering, accurate sun positioning, and even effects like the earth shadows and sky color gradients are simulated for you. The developer spent a decade perfecting the system, and it shows actually, because this add-on had become a go-to lighting tool for many artists and studios around the world and I think it became a pioneer for many tools and add-ons that came after it for Blender. So if you've ever wrestled with HDRIs or manual sky setups, using this add-on actually almost feels like cheating, because you will get beautiful, dynamic lighting with a realistic mood in just seconds instead of hours. And by the way, you have a lot of control over many different things, such as the sun size, brightness, atmospheric density, haze, cloud coverage, etc. Or you can just load one of the pre-made presets, like Earth Clear Sky, Mars Thin Atmosphere, or even a Retro Synth Wave Sky, which is gonna help you get started. When it comes to creating explosions and destruction in Blender, the Chaos add-on blows away the default workflow. This add-on has actually been around for a relatively long time, but it is not the only add-on that can do this type of work. Nonetheless, VFX artists using Blender or filmmakers who need fiery explosions billowing with smoke and flying debris in the scene without spending days or a lot of time tweaking fluid simulations from scratch, I think this one is gonna be really helpful. Light Architect, the developer behind this add-on, provides an entire toolkit when it comes to preset particle systems and forces that improve the explosion creation process. You can choose an explosion type and Chaos will auto-generate the fuel particles in addition to the smoke domain and even adds forces like turbulence for you. As you might have expected, it is not an instant magic final render button. You will still have to run the physics simulation and adjust settings to what you would like, but it can hugely accelerate getting into a good looking blast. And the good news is that the add-on was updated to work with the latest version of Blender, and it even got a new emitter system in recent updates, so it is actively maintained to keep those explosions compatible and still looking awesome. Another add-on that I feel like is in the background, but it is unique and very important, is called Heat Diffuse Skinning. As you may know, 
rigging characters can be a painful process, especially when Blender's default automatic weights fail to assign weights correctly. But this add-on can save you a lot of time when it comes to weight painting and skinning issues. The secret is that it voxelizes the mesh and diffuses heat from each bone, which tends to envelope the limbs nicely. This approach excels where normal automatic weights struggle. For example, if your mesh has multiple parts or non-manifold sections, like a character wearing an armor or a complex outfit, this add-on can weigh those overlapping meshes without causing any issues. And the first time you will use it, it feels almost like magic because it is a huge time saver, especially for riggers and character artists, simply because it can eliminate hours of tweaking. And of course, like any other tool, it is not a 100% perfect. You still need to do some final touches, but the purpose of using the add-on is that it will do something like 90% with the heavy lifting in a very short period of time. Last but not least, I want to talk about RenderSet, which is a great productivity booster if you need to render multiple shots or variants from a single Blender scene. In essence, this add-on lets you create and manage contacts or renders, which are like saved render setups. Each context can store a different camera, resolution, output path, frame range, enabled collections or objects, material overrides, and so on. Basically any render-related setting, and you can switch between them easily. If you ask me, I think this is incredibly useful. Say in architectural visualization, where you have 10 camera angles on the same scene. So instead of manually changing settings, in addition to cameras each time, you can set up 10 contacts and then batch render them while you can grab a coffee. And the add-on will go through each contact one by one automatically. The real importance of RenderSet is how deeply it can integrate with your scene setup. So you can store virtually any property per context, which collections are visible, which lights are on, and even object transformations or material assignments can be tied to a specific context, if you want that, of course. This means you can use one Blender file to produce a daylight and nighttime version in the same scene, which is really cool. And there you have it, guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.